Welcome to worship, to the fourth Sunday of Advent. We're nearly there. Let us worship God. Ascribe to God glory and strength. Ascribe Ascribe to to God God the glory glory due God's God's name. name. Worship God in the beauty of holiness. The voice voice of of God God is a powerful voice and is a voice voice of of splendor. God sits enthroned as ruler forever. God shall give strength Strength to God's God's people people and a a blessing blessing of of peace. peace. Let us pray. O God of angels and stars, shepherds and wise men, and loving God to each of us, hear our praise and gratitude this day. Your arrival will be soon, and with great excitement we await your presence. Bless us, our nation, and the world with your presence and your hope this season. Bring light into our darkened days, we pray in our Savior's name. Amen. Please be seated. As we prepare to make our confession, let's remember that the prophet Micah prophesies that the one of peace will come from Bethlehem. The birth of our Savior was in that town and offers us both forgiveness and peace. So let us confess our sins together using the prayer in our bulletin, followed by our own individual silent confessions. Let us pray. Soon we will celebrate the coming of the Prince of Peace, but we are not a people at peace. We often dominate and demean in our conversations rather than openly listening and hearing each other. We look to battle our enemies and invest in self-defense rather than trying to understand their side and make them friends. Help us work towards your peaceable community so that our relational swords may be beaten into plowshares and our verbal spears may be transformed into welcoming, pruning hooks. Amen. Hear the good news. The prophet Micah goes on to tell us this about our Savior. And he will stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, and they shall live secure. For now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. 
In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Please be seated. Okay. I promise I'm not trying to be the center of attention today, but I'm the center of attention today. <laughs> okay, my name is Julie Clausen, um, and I'm going to be lighting the advent calendar. Good morning. This morning, we light the fourth advent calendar, this one symbolizing love knowing that Jesus is the ultimate expression of the love of God. We know what love is because Jesus shows it to us so clearly and so completely. From 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 to 11, we read, Dear friends, let us love one another because love comes from God. Whoever loves is the child of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. And God showed his love for us by sending his only son into the world so that we might have life through him. This is what love is. It, it, is not that we, it is not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the means by which our sins are forgiven. Dear friends, if this is how God loved us, then we should love one another. So we light this candle as a symbol of Christ's love who brings God's love into the world. Let us pray. We thank you for loving us despite our sin and for coming to us in Jesus Christ. Come into our hearts this season with your message of love. Help us then to love others with your same spirit. For we pray in Christ's name, amen. that 
Thank you so much, Debbie. That was beautiful. And thank you, Kay. Our responsive reading is Psalm 89, beginning at verse 1. It's printed in your bulletin. It's a song of praise that God watches over us and all generations. Please join with me. I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord, forever. With my mouth I will proclaim your faithfulness to all generations. I declare that your steadfast love is established forever. Your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. You said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to my servant David. I will establish your descendants forever and build your throne for all generations. Then you spoke in a vision to your faithful one and said, I have set the crown on one who is mighty. I have exalted one chosen from the people. I have found my servant David, and with my holy oil I have anointed him. My hand shall always remain with him. My arm also shall strengthen him. The enemy shall not outwit him. The wicked shall not humble him. I will crush his foes before him and strike down those who hate him. My faithfulness and steadfast love shall be with him, and in my name his horn shall be exalted. I will set his hand on the sea and his right hand on the rivers. He shall cry to me, You are my Father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. Our scripture lesson is from the Gospel according to Luke, the first chapter, beginning at verse 46. This is where Mary has gone to visit her cousin. She's pregnant with the Lord and breaks out into song. This is the Magnificat. Hear the word of God. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He's brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the holy. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to descendants forever. That ends our lesson. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. It was a TV show that lasted one season a good while back called Cop Rock. It was a decent cop show, but every now and then, all the people in the scenes would break out singing and start dancing around the police station or around a crime scene. It was a massive flop because the music was so out of place. But not all musicals are jarring, and done right can be wonderful. I've seen a number of musicals on Broadway over the years, like Les Mis and Book of Mormon. And in a well-done musical, the music not only fits the scenes, it makes the scene. Done right, music mixed into the drama or comedy or just the everyday of life makes it better. One time, a young boy and his dad were listening to the radio, and the the son asked his dad, what kind of music did you like to listen to when you were young? The dad said, oh, one of my favorite bands was Led Zeppelin. The who, the boy asked. Yes, said the dad, I like them too. I was thinking more about Christmas music at this time of year and to how it can be found everywhere. Years ago, at this time of year, before Christmas Eve, it was a little difficult finding Christmas music on the radio. You had to go up and down the dial. 
But if you have Sirius XM this year, they have 19 channels of holiday music. Wonder why there's so much offered. Perhaps it's because we're still in a pandemic, with cases going up again recently, with predictions of critical hospital numbers ahead again. So I was reading about music therapy, and it's been proven that in crisis situations, according to the AMTA, that's the American Music Therapy Association, that it can be highly effective in developing coping strategies, including understanding and expressing feelings of anxiety and helplessness, supporting feelings of self-confidence and security, and providing a safe or neutral environment for relaxation. How does it do that? The AMTA reports, music is a form of sensory stimulation which provokes responses due to the familiarity, predictability, and feelings of security associated with it. Feedback from relief workers and caregivers indicates that music therapy sessions help to develop a stronger sense of readiness to cope with day-to-day -day stressors and potential future crisis situations. I think that makes a lot of sense for our day, and it makes a lot of sense for what's going on in the Christmas story. The story itself, as, as told in Luke, is practically a musical. Mary's become pregnant in her teenage years prior to marriage and goes to visit her aunt, who also is pregnant but many years older. And after they talk a little, and Mary's Aunt Elizabeth tells her that she knows that Mary is the mother of the Messiah, in the midst of that anxiety-producing discussion, Mary breaks out into song, singing the Magnificat, which was our reading this morning. A little bit later, Elizabeth's husband, Zechariah, who's very elderly, and the two of them have never been able to have children, find out that in her last childbearing years, Elizabeth has become pregnant with the child who will become John the Baptist. And after she gives birth, Zechariah speaks in prophecy using poetry that easily could be verses of a song about his child preparing the way for the Messiah. A little later, shepherds are on a hillside on a cold, dark night when angels out of nowhere light up the sky and after sharing with them the news that a Savior has been born, as a mighty host they begin singing filling the night with praise and glorifying God for what has happened. So when the angels have departed, those shepherds go to Bethlehem to see for themselves what the angels had been so fervently singing about. Christmas is basically a musical with drama and joy, laughter, some danger, and a lot of praise. This Christmas, we need to let the music get inside of us and remind us that we are not alone in this cold, dark world. Our Savior has come to bring light and life. He brings joy to the world, and the mountains in reply echo back their joyous strains. Because away in a manger, in a little town of Bethlehem, gentle Mary laid her child, which prompted the herald angels to sing, Glory to the newborn king. What child is this? It was the child that wise men, who proclaimed themselves three kings of Orient are, traveled to see and present their gifts. Let's let the music of Christmas fill our hearts so that the story of Christmas, as depicted in a child's play, or read in a series of lessons, or heard on a car radio, or played in a grocery store, or piped out of a church organ, that that message of Christmas overcomes the darkness of a COVID world and gives us hope and peace, joy and love. On every day for the rest of Advent and on that silent night, holy night of Christmas Eve, may our Savior truly fill us with his love so that it sings in our hearts. Let us pray. Help us experience your presence this holiday season, Lord, through your word and through the music, so that we may know the wonders, wonders, wonders of his love. Amen.
Well, as you can hear, uh, we have some uh, Sunday school kids that are anxious to get up here and do their thing. It's time for the Sunday school pageant. Let's do it. Take it away. <laughs> In the days, see, in those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world, and everyone went to his town to register, including Joseph and Mary. And Joseph said, What do you have to say? We have to go get registered. And so Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Bethlehem to the town of David because he belonged to the house of David. He went there to register with Mary who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, they ran into the innkeeper And they realized that it was time for the baby to be born. Mary told Joseph, It's time. Yes. Yes. They looked and looked for a place to stay, but everywhere they went, they got the same answer. I do not want to say Okay. There's no room at the end. Good job. Excellent. Okay. And then he found another innkeeper and asked, No, there's no room at the end. He found one more room keep, innkeeper and he asked, <laughs> There's no room at the end, but I got room at the back at a stable. Perfect. They found a stable instead, and Mary gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for him in the inn. So Mary laid her baby down in our very advanced manger. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, that's all of you, keeping watch over their flocks at night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them. Come on up, bro. Come on up. And the glory of the Lord shone round, and they were terrified. But the angel said, Don't be afraid! <laughs> good job. She brought good news. A Savior had been born, Jesus Christ. Suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men, and also everyone else. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born the king of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. The star from the east. And the star told them, <laughs> One more time, star. Is it not working? Follow me. Star, do you want to say it into this one? Star, you're going to have a new microphone. New mic, Star. It'll work. She has a good voice. I don't think she really uh, needed let's that. Let's put that down. <laughs> there you go. Try that. Follow me. <laughs> All right. Now get they yeah. followed the star that they had seen in the east, and it went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down. And the kings told them, We bought presents. We bought presents. We bought presents. 
They opened their treasures and presented him with the gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh. And so it was that God brought his love to us all. And with Jesus came not only love, but compassion, forgiveness, and hope. When we hear the, to the story told, we remember that Christmas is really about the smallest and most innocent, reminding us to be merry and bright because we have the love of God. We wish that for you this holiday season. Ready to sing? Please join in. Wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Good tidings we bring to you and your kin. Good tidings for Christmas and a Happy New Year. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you. Thank you. And here is Mary and here is there's a clip in my hand. Got it. Thank you. That was great. Thank you very much, Sunday School. We'll see you during coffee hour. And I think we'll, we'll all sing Gentle Mary Laid Her Child. Please join with me in stating our faith using this passage from Paul's letter to the Colossians printed in our bulletin. Jesus Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. In him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible. All things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn of the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our special 
worship service this fourth Sunday of Advent, which means that Christmas is nearly here and the anticipation is growing stronger. We're glad to be able to be together and to see each other and such a wonderful Christmas pageant as was done by our Sunday school. Thank you again. Well done. Thanks to Julie and to Kristen and to Debbie and Liz for helping organize that. Uh, Just a few announcements. Today is the deadline for two events. The first is getting your gifts in to the giving tree. We had 51 children to sponsor this year. And as a congregation, we stepped up and all the names were taken. Thank you to all who did. So please have your gifts uh, over in the fellowship hall with name and number or just number uh, so that we may sort them out after the worship service today so the families can begin picking them up tomorrow. Thanks to Lauren Seeger for organizing with Alicia's help in the, in the office that event. The second deadline is to turn in your PVR donation to have a memorial or honoring someone special listed in the bulletin on Christmas Eve. You may use the last page of your bulletin to fill that out and turn it into the church office by today, please. And we want you to be reminded that we have two services on Christmas Eve, the 4.30 service uh, that will be very short for children and families, but we'll still have carols and a story and candle lighting Then at 7.15, we will do the Christmas caroling in here, uh, singing Christmas carols, not going out caroling. And then at 7.30, the full service with choir, lessons and carols, uh, a longer story, and candle lighting. We hope that you'll be able to worship with us at either of those services Christmas Eve. Both will be streamed on Facebook and recorded to YouTube. Let's take a minute now to silently offer our own individual prayers followed by a pastoral prayer and the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. O come, O come, Emmanuel, come to bring peace to those who are fighting with themselves, their families, their enemies. May those who govern do so with goodwill and justice, breaking down barriers, fostering understanding, and drawing our communities and our nations together in peace. O come, O come, Emmanuel, come to bring comfort to those in pain, those who grieve, those in need of healing and restoration. Hear our prayers for Roberta Ann Burkhardt and Heather, Ed and Grace, Jackie and Dan with COVID, Linda Buer, Becky Willis having knee surgery this Wednesday, Phyllis and Lauren Hoke, Karen, Sandy, Irene and Sherry. Be with Anna. John Newcomer and his family on the unexpected loss of his brother Jim after a heart attack. Be with Danny and all those traveling this holiday. Keep us all safe on the roads. Be with Louis and Sheila Vinard, who's recovering from surgery. With Maria and Kate, who has COVID. Lisa and Megan. All military serving far and near. Dorothy, Paul Sutphin in his fight against cancer, the Penberthy family, Nikki Bush and Nicole Perry. Lord, may those who suffer be assured of your extravagant grace and comforted by the hope that nothing will ever separate them from your love. So come, O come, Emmanuel, come to bring compassion to those who are weak and weary those who stumble through their days unable to recognize the beauty and meaning of life. May those who are unemployed, those who are struggling financially, those suffering under the crushing weight of debt, find their way out. 
Grant them options, God, and grant them hope. Come, O come, Emmanuel. Come to us again this Christmas. Fill the world with your grace and peace. And hear us now as we pray the prayer Christ taught us by saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Christmas time is a season of generosity, and we acknowledge that all of our blessings come from our loving Lord. So let us present our tithes and offerings using one of the ways printed in the bulletin for those at home, or the offering plates that will be passed here in the sanctuary. Thank you. Let us pray. Holy God, just like Mary, we wish to magnify you in our worship and with our deeds. Accept these gifts and bless them to do Christ's ministry. May they lift the lowly and fill the hungry. May they spread your love to those in need and help children be safe and secure. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Those of you at home watching either live or on the recording, please leave a message of greeting now. And here in the sanctuary, please take a moment to greet those around you.
So let us go and live in harmony with God's melody. Let us go in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who's with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. In excelsis.